Ok, mucho gusto. Thanks. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> Okay, um, <clears throat> yesterday we were talking about the structure of going to, uh, we were talking about the future and how can we uh, say things in future using going to. We had an exercise or some questions that we are going to um, uh, develop today. We have the practice. And I am going to share the screen with the questions so we can uh, read the questions again. And then we are going to do the practice. So let me share the screen and we are going to read again the questions and then we are going to uh, have the groups to practice reading and answering these questions. So we have here the questions. I wrote them in like this because it is easier to understand or to read the questions. So we are going to read again the questions and then we are going to do the practice. In the number one we have, we are going to spend your next vacations. Where are you going to spend your next vacation? Number two, what is the next thing you are going to say? What is the next thing you are going to say? Number three, what is the next book you are going to read? What is the next book you are going to read? Number four, what is the next course you are going to take? What is the next course you are going to take? Next one, when are you going to meet your friends again? When are you going to meet your friends again? Next one. What gift are you going to buy for your mother on Mother's Day? What gift are you going to buy for your mother on Mother's Day? Next one. Who are you going to call for your next birthday party? Who are you going to call for your next birthday party? What film are you going to watch at the movies? What film are you going to watch at the movies? What is the next TV series you are going to watch? What is the next TV series you are going to watch? Who are you going to meet next weekend? Who are you going to meet next weekend? What in, when is the next time you are going to the supermarket? When is the next time you are going to the supermarket? And the last one, what is the sport you are going to practice? What is the sport you are going to practice? So uh, we have 12 questions and I am going to do two groups. So you have uh, 12 options to ask however you want. In this case, you can choose your partner to uh, ask the question and that person is going to answer. So, let me see if I can, in this case, I don't know if you have the questions already or I can send the questions to the group because I have to um, stop sharing the screen because I need to do the groups. So, tell me. Do you have the questions or uh, it's better that I send the question to the group? Okay, I think you have the question. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen and I'm going to do the rooms.
that you can join your room for the practice. Reina, you have the invitation for the room number two. Can you access? Emma, I send you the invitation for room, uh, room number one, so you can access it to the practice. Thank you. Okay. Um... Entendí que uh, íbamos a preguntarnos a cada quien, ¿verdad? Una pregunta y así sucesivamente íbamos a contestar. Sí. Ok. Mm. No sé quién quiere empezar. Pregunto yo. Ok. Uh, para Jacqueline. Eh... Okay, I listen. Okay. Where are you going to spend your next vacation? I am going to Guatemala in the next vacation. Okay. Eh, puedo hacerle la segunda pregunta yo a Ailey Michel. Yes, tell me. Uh, what is the next thing you are going to say? To say? Tengo una pregunta. Este, entiendo que dice cuál es lo, cuál es lo siguiente que quieres decir. Entonces no lo voy a interpretar muy bien. Y es así. Sí, algo así. ¿Qué es lo que okay. quieres? Sí, como la siguiente cosa. Lo próximo que quieres decir. Okay, in this uh, question I was saying yesterday that you can say whatever you want. En esta pregunta usted puede decir lo que usted quiere. What is the next quiere? thing you are going to say? You can talk about a book, you can talk about a movie, you can talk about whatever you want. For example, I am going to, to be happy. Is course. Yes. Ah, okay. Ahora se puede hacer la pre otra pregunta. Otra. Reina Isabel. Okay. What is the next book you are going to read? I am going to read a software book. Um, my next question is uh, um, Reinaldo. Yes. Okay. Where is the next course? you are going to take? Uh, I'm going to take the course uh, Intermediate 2. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have um, a doubt. Uh, I don't have the question because I only have uh, my cell phone. Uh, please go to the, um, another partner, please ask the question. Eh, Roberto, creo. 
That question was for Carlos Ernesto. Oh, sorry. Carlos. Okay. And I am going to buy some flour. Oh, sweet. <laughs> the next people. Carlos. Huh? Oh, Question uh, about Roberto. Uh, Roberto, who are you going to call for your next birthday party? Uh, <clears throat> Roberto. Roberto de Paul. Ah, okay. Me. Uh, repeating again, please. Okay. Who are you going to call for your next birthday party? Ah. Uh, Uh, I don't know. Uh, your father, your mother. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, my, I'm going to call me who, my who my sister. You want to call for your next yeah. birthday party. Like, okay. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Okay. Now, Where, you, next Roberto. Question. Okay. Uh, number Made eight. A question to Jimmy. Yes. Okay. Number eight. Number eight. What yeah. what film are yeah. you going to watch at the movies? Okay. I am going to watch the movie is the Avengers. Oh, Spider-Man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. okay. <clears throat> Patricia, <clears throat> next. Estoy okay. What is the next TV series you are going to watch? I'm going to watch Lucifer by Netflix. <laughs> yes. It's good. <laughs> uh -huh. wow. Very scary. It's a scary movie. It's scary. <laughs> oh my no. God. No, oh, para no. Nada. Help us, please. Really? Okay. It's about policemen. Oh. Sorry. But it's Lucifer. Me dirigí por el nombre. <laughs> ah, no. I, 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 I. Yes, yes, sorry. Uh, who are, who are, who are you going to meet the next weekend? Uh, Amilcar. Again. Who are you going to meet? I'm going to meet uh, a new co-worker. Okay. Now you, the question number 11. Okay. Um, um, to Diana Lopez. Yes. Uh, when is the next time you are going to supermarket, to the supermarket? I'm going to um, go. I'm going, uh -huh. I'm going to go to supermarket. It's Monday. Monday. Okay.
Okay, um, we are going to um, wait a little more because there are some people in the rooms. So it has like 10 seconds to wait. So we're going to wait for them. Okay, it's time. Okay, for those questions, we have um, some uh, answers that we, uh, um, I, I was hearing your, your answers and it was uh, really good. Um, and we have some uh, answers, uh, for example, uh, for the first one, where are you going to spend your next vacation? Maybe we are, uh, don't know where is the place that we are going to um, visit in our next vacation. But in this case, we are using it just as an example. And we say that we are going to the beach, we are going to the mountain, we are going to visit our parents, or we are going to visit another places. For the second one, what is the next thing you are going to say? It was a, a open question in this case because it is about a, everything you want to say. Um, it is not about a, a specific topic. You can say whatever you want. And in this case, um, you can uh, tell about a TV series you was uh, watching um, you can uh, Tell your partners about a book that you find interesting. Um, you can uh, talk about your pets, your family, whatever you want. The, what is the next book you are going to read? Uh, maybe uh, we don't have enough time to do something like that as reading a book. Or maybe we have our plans to do some activities like this that is going to read uh, some books in uh, in the future, that is really, really um, not in months, just in weeks. Uh, what is the next course you are going to take? Uh, you will know that you have to take another course for the English uh, classes. Then when are you going to meet your friends again? Maybe in a week, maybe uh, tomorrow, maybe this weekend. So in this case, we are going to meet our friends or my friends in this case, the next uh, weekend on Monday, on, on Thursday, on Friday, whatever the day is. Then what gift are you going to buy for your mother on Mother's Day? And I was saying that you can change that um, question for the uh, people that we want, or if we have a special one that we um, are going to give something and we can change the question. Who are you going to call for your next birthday party? Maybe our parents, maybe uh, our sisters and brothers, maybe our friends. So we are going to call someone special for our birthday party. What film are you going to watch at the movies? That's um, a lot of uh, options that we have. And I'm going to watch and you say, watch uh, which film are you going to watch to the movies? What is the next TV series you are going to watch? Now with technology, we have a lot of um, things that we can uh, watch in TV or in internet. And we have a lot of options and you have a lot of options to um, say in this question. Who are you going to meet next weekend? Maybe a partner, maybe a friend, maybe uh, someone of your family. That's um, the answer, the possible answers. Then what is the next time you are going to the supermarket? Maybe on Monday, maybe on weekend, maybe on Wednesday. That's a lot of options. And the last one, what is the sport you are going to practice? If you are going to practice some sports, you can say, what is the sport you are going to practice? Or if you are not going to practice any sport, you can say it like that. So. Now we are going to um, develop the next topic. Uh, yesterday I was, I was talking that we have um, some uh, 
future tenses that we are going to develop. And we have the first one that is the structure or a special a structure for the future or talk about the future that is going to. And now um, we are going to learn something about wheel. That is the second structure that we are going to uh, develop in this uh, last week of this um, course. So we are going to talk about the uh, wheel, the structures and the uses and how to make sentence with this structure. So I'm going to have this and I'm going to write the structure. So we are talking about the future also. Uh, this week is about future, not past, not present. It's future. So we have future with wheel. That's our um, main word, wheel. But we are going to see some structures of wheel and how can we use it. So we are going to start with the structures. Then we are going to explain something more about these uh, structures. So we have the structure number one, that is the affirmative. And we have the structure right here. For the affirmative sentence, we have the subject plus will plus the verb. In this case, we have some specification for the verb. It says that, let me insert something here because I need to write the specification. So it says that the verb is the base form of the infinitive, the base form of the infinitive. We are going to use the base form of the verb. We are not going to change for past, for present, or for future, or something like that. We are just going to um, write the infinitive form of the verb. But in this case, you already know that the infinitive is when we add to, uh, tell me, Roberto. Roberto, do you, you have a question or something like that? Oh, okay. So in this case, you have, a, you know that when we use the infinitive, we use the verb with to at the beginning. But in this case, we are not going to use the to. We have some examples to go. Then we have to study. And we have to speak. These are the, um, the infinity form of the verbs because we are using to at the beginning or in the, in the first part. So in this case, we are not going to use it with will. We use only the verb. So in this uh, case, we are going to mark the beginning because we are not going to use it. So in this case, let me see if I can do it like this. No, I can do it. I don't know why. Okay. No, it's not, it's not working. So we are going to have this like this because we are not going to use this one. Just we are going to use the verb, just the verb, not with the completed structure. Okay, we have here the uh, structure for affirmative sentences, and we are not going to use the two, the two, but we are going to use the infinitive form of the verb. So we have some examples. 
We are going to write the uh, subject first. I, you, he, she, we, and they. So we have the subject. That is the first part. We have the subject. Then we are going to write will with all of the subjects. It is the same for everyone. Yes, it's the same for every subject. So then we are going to write the verb, the verb in infinitive form, go. In this case, we are going to use go. Okay, we have the verb, and then we are going to write the complement that is optional. And the last one. So, okay, we have our sentence in a affirmative form. In this case, we are saying that our structure is the subject plus will plus the verb and infinity form plus this uh, complement. In this case, we have here our structure. And if you can say something in this structure is that we have the uh, third person of the uh, singular and it is not changing anything. It is not like in, um, in other uh, structures that we change the auxiliary and we change the verb. In this case, we are not going to change anything because we have the auxiliary. In this case, the auxiliary is will. And it is uh, talking about the future. So we are not going to uh, change the verb and the auxiliary is the same. In este caso, si nos hemos fijado en otras estructuras, cuando hablamos más que todo del pasado o del presente, cambiamos el verbo o el auxiliar con la tercera persona del singular. En este caso, no lo vamos a hacer porque el will es el auxiliar que nos está dando la pauta para eh, entender que estamos hablando del futuro y esa estructura no se cambia, no se le aplica la regla de la tercera persona del singular. So in this case, we are going to write it like this. It is the same for every subject of this uh, exercise. So then in a spoken English, a contraction of will is often used. It is very used, it really. So we can say that in a spoken English, A contraction of wheel is often, but not in, it is not just in spoken English because we can uh, find them in the writing way. So we can find really, really often. So we have the example, I will, and we have the contractions uh, like this. That is the contraction. I'll. And we have the example. We have the uh, common example that is I will go there tomorrow. And we have here the contraction of this sentence. 
I'll go there tomorrow. So it's very common to see uh, some structure like this when we are reading something or in the spoken English is very, very common. So then we have the second structure. Number two, it's negative. We have the negative structure for the- Teacher, I have a question. Roberto. Can you tell me uh, in a pronunciation uh, in contraction? For example, I, I will, I'll. Uh -huh. I will go there tomorrow in the contractions. I'll go there tomorrow. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And you? You. You'll. You. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So we have the structure for the negative sentence that is almost the same with the affirmative and we already know because it is the same with the uh, other structures. So we have a, the uh, structure like this, the subject, Plus, will, and we have here the change, not, plus the verb, plus the complement. In this case, we are going to add it to the complement. Complement. And we have some examples. So we are going to um, compare some sentences. We have uh, one sentence with affirmative, that is, I will be ready. I will be ready in five minutes. I will be ready in five minutes, but we have the negative one. I mean, okay. I will not be ready in five minutes. And we have another way to say this sentence in negative form. So I'm going to write it like this. And it is, I want be ready in five minutes. But what is this? What is want? What does it mean? So in spoken English, the contraction want is used more. In this case, this contraction is used more in the spoken English, and it is the, um, the contraction for will not. In this case, we're not going to say uh, will not. We are going to say one. So this is the contraction. This one is the contraction for will not. So we are not, uh, it's not like that one. We are using the verb be, are, aren't, and isn't, or is not. In this case, we are going to like make a mix of will and not, and we have want. So it is the contraction for the negative form of the structure. Then we have the questions. Okay, just like other model verbs, we change the order of the subject and will, or in this case, with the model verb eh, to make it a question. It is the same with the um, other structures that we were uh, practicing before in the other weeks. And, uh, in the last week, um, then we have the affirmative one we are going to change. We have the affirmative sentence. 
That is, you will tell us the truth. That is the affirmative. And then we have the question that we are going to change the order. We are going to begin with the auxiliary, in this case, will. Then we are going to use the subject. Then we are going to use the verb. And the complement. And the question mark. So in this case, the structure is the following. We have will plus subject plus verb plus complement plus the question mark. So we have the three structures, affirmative, negative, and the question. It is not uh, something that we can like um, understand because it is really simple this way. So we um, learn about the simple present, we learn about the past, we learn about the future. And in the, in the three sent uh, tenses, it's almost the same, the structures. It is not something really complicated because there are simple ones. In this case, the affirmative, the negative, and the question uh, structure is easy to understand because it is almost the same. In the case of the affirmative, we, we already know that it's the subject plus the auxiliary plus the verb. And in the negative one, it's just adding the word not to change uh, the um, structure from affirmative to uh, negative. And in the question, we already know that is just to change the order of the words. In this case, we are going to use the will, and then we are going to use the subject. But it's the same with the past um, tenses because um, in the past, we already did something like that. Así que para el will, tenemos las tres estructuras, afirmativo, negativo y um, la interrogativa. Eh, es lo mismo con otras estructuras, con otros eh, tiempos que hemos visto, eh, por ejemplo, en el pasado, donde el, la afirmativa es la base para poder hacer una oración negativa, en el caso de que solo agregamos el not, y para la eh, interrogativa, que solo eh, le cambiamos eh, el orden, ¿verdad? En este caso, de el auxiliar, que va al principio y luego va el sujeto, porque en este caso no estamos utilizando las WH words, to make questions or we are not uh, using the do and we not uh, we are not using the um, can. So in this case, it is the auxiliary that is at the beginning of the sentence. So then, in general, will is used to talk about the future. We already know that, that we are going to use will for talking about the future and we have some examples. I will help you tomorrow. It is very important that we uh, write the time when we are going to perform something. I think we will win on Saturday. We are uh, writing a day and a specific day in which we are going to perform the actions. Then we have, we will see more uses of will in a moment. In this case, we are marking the time when we are going to perform the action. Estamos utilizando el will para el futuro, pero en este caso también lo ayudamos escribiendo un día en específico o un momento en específico en el que se van a utilizar. For example, in the sentence, I will help you tomorrow. I will help you is the action. I am going to help someone. But when? When? Tomorrow. And I am saying that I am going to do it in the future. That is not like um, a future, future, future. It is a, um, a day that is already going to happen. So 
In this case, will is a modal verb. That is a tense, like going to, it is a special structure. And in this case, we are not going to use the rule of the third person that I was saying, that it is not um, necessary that we change the verb for uh, the rule of the third person. But in this case, we are going to write it like this. Will is a modal verb. And in this case, it is um, so we are not going to use the rule of the person. And we have the subjects that is he, she, and it that uh, are the third person of the singular. And in this case, we are not going to write wheels for this uh, sentence. That is incorrect that we apply the uh, rule of the third person with this uh, model verb. So in this case, this is incorrect because we are not going to write it like this. So we are going to write he will. But I, I am already uh, explained that. So this is just a reminder. It will. So it's not necessary to change the uh, structure for these model verbs. For the structure, of the positive form we use the verb in infinitive but we don't use the two And we have some examples. We have an example with two. You will, you go. This one is incorrect because we can use will and to. Then the, way, the correct way to write this sentence is you will go. So it is not necessary to add the two to the infinitive form of the verb. So in this case, we were talking about the will and the third person, but also it says that with the third person of singular, we don't use the rule. In this case, with the verb because in some cases we uh, change the verb uh, when we are using the third person to make sentence. In this case, we are not going to do it with the verb either. Since will is classified as a model verb like can, will, cool, and should, it has the same characteristics. So we are going to talk about the characteristic of the will that is um, that we are using it as a model verb.
Okay. It says that the wheel is classified as a model verb and it has the same characteristic as the other model verbs. And those characteristics are the number one, it doesn't it doesn't change in the third person that we were talking uh, about uh, before. That is not necessary to change the model verb for the third person in singular. And the number two, it is always combined with another verb in base form that we also uh, were talking about, that it is not necessary to add the two with the in infinity form of the verb. And the number three, we don't use it with do in questions. So it is not necessary to use do with the structure of wheel. Como está clasificado como un modal verb, en este caso, ¿verdad? Tiene las mismas características que los otros modal verbs. Eh, ya habíamos hablado de que no se cambia en la tercera persona. No es necesario aplicar la regla de la tercera persona de singular. Siempre se combina con otro verbo. El will como tal no va a servirnos a nosotros para explicarnos la acción o qué es lo que se está realizando. Because it is just a model verb and we are using it as an auxiliary. So we are not going to do an action talking about with will. Así que siempre tenemos que combinarlo con otro verbo que esté en su forma base, pero eh, sin escribir el to, porque es incorrecto. So, in the number three, we don't use it with do in question. No lo utilizamos con el do en preguntas. So, that's the characteristic of this model verb that we um, are studying right now. So, when we are Teacher, going to... Tell me. I have a question. Tell me. Um, can we make a WH question in with a will. negative form? With will. Uh -huh, in a negative form. Okay, in the negative form. Mm, in this case, it's better to do it just with the auxiliary or the model verb. <clears throat> Cuando estamos utilizando el negativo, es mejor que utilicemos el, el model verb, in this case, el will, for the question. Eh, no sale mejor y si lo vamos a hacer en negativo, it's better to do it just with the auxiliary. In this case, we can use it will not or won't, but it is not always uh, this um, the correct way to uh, make question with won't. So, podemos utilizarlo uh, de, de una sola vez and not using the WH uh, words, just using the auxiliary for the question. Lo utilizamos eh, mejor solo el auxiliar para hacer las preguntas en este, en este caso. Y si es en negativo, utilicemos eh, la forma larga, that, que es will not, y no nos centremos tanto en el want. So it's, it's better to do it just with the auxiliary pair. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. So we are going to uh, talk about the uses. When to use will. Cuando utilizamos will, we use will in the following uh, circumstances. We have the number one for things that we decide not in the past, not in the past to do now. And we have some specification, oh my God. Some specification, it says rapid decision or fast decision, that's. Okay, the first one, we are talking about the things that we decide to do now. Maybe I am thinking something or I have to decide something in this moment. So in this case, we are going to use a wheel or a fast decisions in some situations. So it is not uh, something that I have meditated for days or for weeks. This is something that I am uh, already decide in this moment. So this is when you make a decision at this moment in an in spontaneous way. Cuando utilizamos will, la número uno es para cosas que decidimos hacer 
ahora, en este momento, justo en este momento decidimos hacerlo. No lo meditamos, lo hacemos de manera espontánea. So, we have an example. I will call a taxi for you. Maybe we are in, on the party. Uh, maybe we have, uh, or we have a meeting that is um, going to end um, very, very late in the night. So we decide to call a taxi. So in this case, I will call a taxi for you so you can go home and I am deciding it right now in the moment. Then we have another example and it says, I think we'll go right now. And we have the specification. I just decide this right now. So I was thinking that I am not feeling very well in the place I am, I am in this moment. So I decide uh, that it's better to go right now. So I am just deciding to do something. Then we have this, that is something uh, that we do in our daily life. Which one? We are uh, choosing something. Which one? Um, I will have the chicken sandwich, please. So we are in the restaurant and we are deciding what are we going to eat? So we are deciding in the moment, not thinking too much about the food. So in these cases, we use will. This is one of the uses. So we have the number two. Number two, when we think or believe something, about the future. And we have, again, as, as yesterday we were talking about in the structure of going to, we are talking about the predictions. But we have predictions again, because we are talking the future and we really do not, uh, don't know what is going to happen in the future. So we are making predictions of the future. So. This can be uh, based on personal judgment or opinion. This is personal. This is not based on a, um, like, um, we're talking about yesterday, um, evidence. This is, this is not based on evidence. This is, um, this is based on personal judgment or opinions. En el going to, en el, la parte de predictions, We make predictions based on evidence. Estábamos basados en evidencia, algo que podíamos eh, ver y que nos podía dar la pauta para eh, hacer nuestras predicciones. In this case, we are not talking about eh, evidence. In this case, we are talking about uh, personal judgment or personal eh, opinion. En, en este caso, es, estamos hablando de opiniones personales o de nuestro juicio, de algo que nosotros creemos. So in this case, it's not about the evidence. And we have the example, the president will not be reelected at the next election. Okay, we have the sentence, the president will not be reelected at the next election. Why? It is based on our judgment or personal opinion about the president. So it is not based on evidence that the president in, it is not going to be reelected in the next um, elections. So then we have the number three. It is almost 
the end. It is number, uh, we have five uh, uses. So we have the number three and it says to make an offer, a promise or a threat. So in this case is to make an offer, a promise or a threat. So we have the example in this case, you look tired. You look tired. I will or I'll finish the dishes for you. So in this sentence, we can say that this uh, person is uh, making an offer because uh, the other person seems to be tired. So the other person says, I will finish the dishes for you. This is an offer. If you say anything, if you say anything, I will kill you. So in this case, it is a, maybe a threat or a promise, in this case that this person says something that is not um, allowed to say, this other one will be very, very angry. And the next one, I will have it ready by tomorrow. This is a promise. So we have four promise, four offers on four tricks. Then we have the number four and it's almost time. So let me end this. Number four, for an habit or a habit for a habit. That is predictable. Predictable behavior. And we have the example, oh my God. My daughter will fall asleep as soon as she is put into bed. My daughter will fall asleep as soon as she is put into bed. So let me write the number five and then I will explain the number four and number five. Okay, it is going to end the time. So I am going to explain the number four and number five. So in the number four is for a habit that is predictable behavior. And in the sentence says, my daughter will fall asleep as soon as she is put into bed. This is something that we already know that is going to happen. And it is in a behavior that someone has. And then the number five, you use want when someone refused to do something. I told him to clean his room, but he won't do it. You say something and the other person is not going to do it. So we use want when someone refused to do something. So uh, the uses, we have five uses and we have number one, that is um, for things that decide, we decide now, right now in this moment, and number two, when we think or believe something about the future, but these predictions are based on a personal um, idea or 
a, a personal judgment. It is not based on um, evidence. Then the number three, to make an offer, a promise or a threat. Number four, for a habit that is predictable behavior. And number five, you use one when someone refused to do something. So those are the uses of will and we end this topic right now. So it's time to end this session and we are going to see each other tomorrow. That is almost the end of this session and end of this course. So now it's time to say goodbye. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. And it's almost time to end this course. Teacher, um, I have a question. Tell me. And uh, I don't know if um, the platform was fixed because yesterday I couldn't work in the final exam because um, wasn't the the video uh, the audio. Sorry. Okay, uh, someone said that maybe, and I am not really sure, but it, it was saying that maybe it is fixed now. You can uh, try it, and mm -hmm. it is, if it is not fixed, you can write in the group that you have problems with the audios, so mm -hmm. they can uh, see that the problem is not fixed yet. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Something else? Oops, good night, teacher. Okay. Good night, everyone, and see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Good see night. you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.